Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the HP NV14. This is a pretty powerful 14-inch laptop from HP. They're kind of aiming this one at creative professionals and gamers to some degree. And it's nice to start to see some of these smaller compact laptops with decent graphics performance. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this one in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one as configured is just under $1,200, but the price point's going to vary based on where you buy it from and what configuration options you choose on yours. Now this is designed primarily for people that need a little bit more graphical horsepower than a basic Ultrabook. So if you're just doing college papers and very casual photo editing and web browsing, this will probably be overkill. But if you're doing live video production or you're doing uh, more advanced photo editing or video editing, this is definitely something to look at. And if you like to play games every once in a while, I think this is another reason to consider something like this. Now you could always get a gaming laptop and maybe you can find one for around the price that this one costs, but this is thinner and lighter. And so if you wanted something that was more portable yet has some of that graphical prowess, that's why you might consider something like this. The display on this one is really nice, a 14-inch display, IPS, 400 nits, and it's a 16 by 10 display, which means that it is taller than some of the traditional 1080p, 16 by 9 aspect ratio displays that you might see out there. It looks great. It is pre-calibrated out of the factory. It runs at 100% of sRGB, so if you are doing some uh, mid-range photo editing, things should be pretty accurate. The one issue you run into with one of these taller displays is that if you're watching a 1080p video like we're about to do here, you will see some letterboxing top and bottom uh, because this display is at a different aspect ratio than many of the videos you might encounter on the web. So you can see we've got black bars here and here. Uh, but beyond that, everything looks great on this laptop. And to be honest with you, you're really not going to notice the letterboxing here because it is pretty minimal. But that's just one thing to be aware of on a taller display. But I like having that extra real estate here, and it makes a lot of sense to have that. Uh, this display runs at 1920 by 1200, so this is not a higher resolution 4K display. But it's nice and bright. It looks fantastic. And I think they did a very uh, nice job here getting a high quality display paired up with this hardware. Now inside it has an Intel i5 1135G7 processor. It also has an NVIDIA GPU, a GTX 1650Ti Max-Q. That GPU has four gigabytes of its own memory for doing games and video editing and production and whatnot. It also has 16 gigabytes of system memory. Uh, that, though, is soldered onto the motherboard and cannot be upgraded. Our review loaner here came with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. That's an NVMe drive that can be replaced and upgraded. There is only one storage slot inside the computer, and you can get at it uh, just by popping off the bottom case here to do that swap out. I was hoping to see a little bit more storage come with something at this price point, but that's what uh, this model has built in. Uh, the weight on this one is 3.59 pounds or 1.63 kilograms. So for a computer with a GPU, it's pretty lightweight. Decent build quality as well. It's all aluminum. I did see some Amazon reviews talking about some imperfections in the aluminum build quality here. I didn't see that on mine, so that might have been an early production unit that had some issues. Uh, this one uh, looks just fine to me. And I found the keyboard on it to be very comfortable. We've got very nice, large, and well-spaced keys here. This is on par with some of the other HP computers we've looked at recently. The keyboard is backlit, so you can see it in the dark, and there's decent travel here as well. It feels pretty nice and comfortable. I didn't have to get used to typing on it. The trackpad is equally nice, nice and large. It is a mechanical click pad. I did disable tap to click on my Windows control panel because it was going off inadvertently whenever my fingers brushed over it. Once I turned that off, everything worked a lot better. So on the keyboard and trackpad side, all is good. There's also a fingerprint reader here next to the left arrow key to get you into your system a little bit quicker. A good amount of ports on this one. You've got your headphone microphone jack here for a headset. Uh, next to it, you've got a USB 3 port, a full-size HDMI output that supports 4K at 60 hertz, 
And then you've got a Thunderbolt 4 port here. Uh, this is compatible with USB-C, but also Thunderbolt. And you can get two displays out of the Thunderbolt port and another one out of the HDMI for a total of three. So that's pretty useful. On the other side here, we've got an SD card reader. This is a micro SD card uh, slot. The card will stick up just slightly out of the slot. It doesn't go flush, uh, but it is pretty close to flush. Just keep that in mind. It won't go fully in. Uh, next to that, you've got a USB 3 port and your power adapter goes in there. Now the laptop comes with a 135 watt power adapter. Uh, this is larger than most Ultrabooks because this does have the GPU on board. So as a result, if you are looking to plug in a docking station that might provide power over a Thunderbolt cable, you may not be able to provide enough power that uh, this laptop needs to power its GPU, for example. So I would use uh, the power adapter even if you are using a dock and you'll be able to save a little bit of money on a Thunderbolt dock because you won't need one with a lot of power delivery because this will be providing the power. So just keep that in mind if you are looking to dock it. You're going to want to plug in uh, that power adapter all the time. Now the battery life on this is surprisingly good for a laptop with a GPU. We were getting about 10 to 11 hours on it doing the basics like web browsing, email, and word processing. Once you do stuff that kicks on that GPU, that's going to start eating into the battery life more significantly. So your battery life is going to vary greatly based on what you're doing with this. But I think for normal work tasks, you'll be able to get a really good battery life out of this on par with other Ultrabooks that are around this screen size. One thing you should keep an eye on, though, is the system control here as part of the HP Command Center because you can uh, put it into performance mode to get the most boost out of it when you are plugged in. Just make sure you go back to balanced here when you're done so that uh, that GPU doesn't kick on too much more than it needs to. But beyond that, I found the battery life on this to be quite good. The fan noise on this is also very minimal even when you're playing a game or doing something that's working that GPU more. It does have two fans inside and it really doesn't get all that whiny and loud. You will hear them running. It's not completely silent, of course but they did do a nice job trying to keep the noise down while still being able to cool the laptop. We'll take a look at its thermal performance in a little bit, uh, but I was pleased that the fans weren't that noisy. You do have a very large rubber foot here at the bottom, which keeps the uh, air intake down here clear because it definitely needs a lot of airflow given its small size to keep itself relatively cool. And that air is brought in from the bottom and blown out through the back here. So just uh, make sure those airways are clear uh, for the best performance all the time. Now, if you're doing a lot of online meetings, this will do just fine with Zoom and Google Meet and Microsoft Teams and all the other ones out there. You've got a 720p webcam here at the top. It looks okay, as you can see, nothing spectacular. Uh, we are starting to see more 1080p webcams make their way to laptops, but not this one. It does, though, have a cool shutter system that you can see there. Uh, so what you do is you hit the shutter key on the top of the keyboard here, and it's going to put an opaque filter over that lens. You can see it popping up here when I push that key down. Uh, so you don't need to put tape or any other kind of shutter mechanism on your laptop. Just hit the key here, and the camera is blocked. And they also have a microphone mute key, which will mute the mic across any application. You just push it down, it lights up, as you can see here, and then any application that was using the microphone will no longer have access to it until you push it again. Now, the built-in speakers on this are not as good as I would have liked. They are basically downward firing on both sides here of the laptop. There's nothing forward-facing, and I thought this uh, grill-like area here at the top of the a uh, keyboard deck was an additional set of speakers, but it isn't. So it's just sending sound out uh, through the bottom here. And as a result, the sound will vary based on what kind of surface the laptop is on. There's good stereo separation here, but I think the audio quality on a higher end laptop like this could have sounded a little bit better. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with the basics, some web browsing. We'll pull up the nasa.gov homepage here on Google Chrome and see how fast everything springs to life. And as you can see, as expected, uh, this is a very fast web browsing machine. I would expect nothing less out of uh, the hardware that's inside here, so no problems. It does have Wi-Fi 6, which we're now running here in the studio. 
Uh, so all in a very good web browsing experience. A little bit earlier, we ran YouTube and ran a 1080p 60 video file just to see if we'd have any drop frames. Uh, there were a couple when it first started, but we've seen that from time to time. Uh, but otherwise, no issues here. It was able to play out a 1080p 60 video from YouTube without issue. And I expect other video platforms like Netflix and Disney Plus and whatnot all to work pretty well on here too. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 151.6. That is pretty much right where I expected it to land. And it actually did a little bit better uh, than the HP Pavilion 14T that was powered by the same processor that we looked at not too long ago. So altogether, again, very good web browsing performance here. All right, let's move on now to some gaming. And we're going to begin with GTA 5 running at 1920 by 1200 at the highest settings. And as you can see here, we're pretty much in the 60 to 70 frames per second territory, which is great on a 14 inch laptop. We're getting this because we've got that GPU on board, the 1650 Ti Max-Q. If we didn't have that, you would not be seeing these frame rates with this uh, level of graphical fidelity. Uh, next, we're gonna check out Rocket League. And again, highest settings, 1920 by 1200 and we're getting frame rates well north of 100 frames per second and sometimes as high as 200 frames per second depending on what's going on on screen. Uh, so that's great. By the way, the display is only 60 hertz here, so you will, uh, of course, not be getting use out of all of the frames you're generating here. Uh, next, we're going to check out The Witcher 3. This is high settings, and we were getting about 50 to 60 frames per second. It was generally just under 60. Uh, when we put on ultra settings, we were getting between 40 and 45 frames per second. Uh, this game, of course, is a bit more demanding than some of the others that we looked at. Uh, so that'll give you a sense as to what you can expect on the higher end. All right, next up here is Fortnite. And here we're running at high settings, 1920 by 1200. And we were getting just about 60 frames per second here. Uh, when Jake switched it to the Epic settings, we were getting about 45 to 55 frames per second. So you'll have to tweak this one a little bit to get a constant 60, but I think you can get it there, uh, no problem with the right settings. And last, let's take a look at Doom. This is the 2016 version of Doom. Uh, this one runs at 1080p, so we have some letterboxing on screen. And there at ultra settings, we were getting about 130 frames per second, give or take. This is always a fast game runs great on here and again this is all because we've got the gpu on board now we did run some benchmarks on this too let's take a look at the 3d mark time spy test first and on that test we got a score of 3187 and if you take a look at two other laptops on the top of the chart here you'll see those are doing a little bit better on those first two graphics tests but they're doing better because they are running with a different version of the 1650 ti the NV14 here has the Max-Q variant, which is designed for thinner and lighter laptops. So you get most of the performance that that chipset is capable of, but not all of it. And the reason is, is that it has to dissipate heat in a smaller package here. So the chips are going to run a little bit slower. So that's the reason why there is a variation in performance. But still, I'm very pleased with what we saw out of this. And hopefully this gives you a good idea as to where the Max-Q version of this chip lands versus the non-Max-Q variants. And speaking of thermal performance, let's take a look at the 3D Mark stress test. There we got a score of 95.8% which is just shy of the passing grade of 97%. So you might notice a little bit of a drop off in performance when you place the computer under heavy sustained load for a long period of time. We didn't notice any throttling though in our gameplay sessions, but that test indicates there might be a little bit of variability to the performance, especially if you just leave it under heavy load for a long duration. And one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up Ubuntu 20.10. Everything got detected properly. That includes the touchscreen, video, audio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Even the NVIDIA GPU was detected by the operating system here. So I think if you are looking to run different operating systems on this machine, you should be able to do that uh, without too many issues. And overall, I found it to be a very nice laptop. I like seeing GPUs in machines of this size and form factor because I think for a lot of folks, that's going to be a really effective way to get better performance out of something that is still pretty thin and light. 
and you saw what it was doing on gaming. We could run OBS and some other applications on here without too many issues either. It feels pretty nice from a build quality standpoint, all metal. Again, nice high quality feel to it. I also like the fact that when you lift the display up here, the bottom keyboard deck doesn't come with it. That's always a good sign of a well-constructed computer. The display does bounce around a little bit more than I would like, and that's something that might bug you if you're doing a lot of touch display kind of work and you can see how far the display goes down here. But all in, a very nice, compact, but powerful little computer that might be of interest to people doing a lot of creative work. And again, I really love that 16 by 10 display on here too. That is gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.